What up, African world? It's Home Team here, and I'm back at it with my series, A Closer Look. And today, we're going to take a closer look at the Tutsi people of Rwanda. And as always, if you want access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos, you can do so on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. The Tutsi are called by a number of similar names, including Batutsi, Tutsi, Watutsi, or Watusi. In Rwanda today, they're usually referred to officially as Batutsi. The Batutsi number around 2.5 million in the Central African states of Rwanda and Burundi. A small number of Batutsi, usually called Banyarwanda, indicating they're originally from Rwanda, also live in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, for this video, I'm going to have to ask for forgiveness before I really get into this episode of the Batutsi. Because as much as I tried to focus only on the Batutsi, it became increasingly impossible to speak about Batutsi history without mentioning the Hutu, or more properly known as the Bahutu. Why? Well, because the Bahutus and the Batutsis are very similar people with minuscule differences. The problem with Batutsi history is that its innocence has been stolen due to the conflict of 1994 and the backwards ideology of the Hamitic theory proposed by racist European thought. And if that wasn't enough, even local historians tend to apply some political objectives with historical events, which further confuses the issue. Hopefully you'll understand what I mean once I dive further in. The Batutsi speak Kinyanwanda or Kirundi, the same language spoken by their Bahuti neighbors. If we can sum up the social, political, and cultural history of the Batutsi and their interaction with the Bahutu into one sentence, it would be this. The cattle owning Batutsi make clients or subjects of the farming Bahutus, an identity between these social groups was largely dependent on owning cattle. In other words, identity in that region, although not exclusive to the ownership of cattle, was still heavily dependent on agriculturist status or pastoralist status, the Bahutu being agriculturist and the Batutsi being pastoralist. Please remember to keep that in mind because it's very important when understanding Batutsi history. One of the earliest oral histories of the Batutsi tells of their greatest cultural hero, Gehanga. The story of Gehanga tells the history of Rwanda from a Batutsi perspective and is of great value to us in a diaspora. The collection of oral history myths of the Batutsi is called the Abitakerizo. According to the Abitakerizo, scattered Hutu and Twa groups inhabited Rwanda when the conquering Tutsi arrived from the north in the 10th century, introducing centralized monarchy, cattle, iron, and other advancements the Tutsi, specifically the royal clan, developed a powerful, cohesive state from chaos. Gehanga, meaning creator or founder, is described in oral histories as a heroic Tutsi king credited with founding the monarchy in the 11th century. Gehanga was born of a marriage of two lineages, an ancestor of his blacksmith father, the god Kigwa, is said to have come down from the heavens to found the royal line while his mother descended from Kabeja. During his childhood and youth, he traveled throughout the land, building ties in the south and west before settling in Bahanga in the north. He ruled from a palace in the forest of Bahanga, an area sacred and forbidden until open to the public in 2004. East African myths of origin concern not only humans, but also cattle, the all-important source of wealth. Gehanga's daughter, Inyawa Rukaba, is believed to have been the first human to taste cow's milk and subsequently domesticated cattle. Other tales relate that Gehanga himself introduced fire, ironworking, woodworking, pottery, and gourd containers to Rwanda. According to legend, Gehanga was succeeded by his son, Kanyarwanda, who fathered Gatwa, Gahutu, and Gatutsi, the ancestors of the Twa. Hutu, and Tutsi, respectively. In one of the allegories, Kigwa, the god of heaven, entrusted each to keep milk overnight. By morning, Gatwa had drunk his milk, Gahuti had spilt his, and only Gatutsi returned his safely. 
Thus, only Gatutsi was deemed fit to rule. A cult arose around Gahanga and was later introduced to the royal court. The fire of Gahanga was kept burning by the royal court at a site known as the place where the cattle are milked. Whatever our opinions are concerning the Batutsi oral history, this history was no doubt played out in the early Rwandan state. Now the origin of the Batutsi is of course shrouded in layers and layers of political and social interests from inside and outside the region. I'm not sure if there will ever be a clear and pure retelling of the origin of the Batutsi. However, the most objective and sound idea seems to have recently come about in 2015, and many scholars seem to rally around this idea. But of course, there is still diversity of opinion. So here it is. After the painful memory of the Rwandan genocide began to die down on the world stage, the understanding of Bahutu and Batutsi identity began to be a little more clear. The distinction between the Batutsi and the Bahutu is a socio-political one and not one based on major ethnic separation. Those of us who insist that the Bahutu and the Batutsi are separate ethnic groups should consider this one fact. The Bahutu and the Batutsi identity is bipolar. Neither can exist in isolation. It is impossible to speak on Bahutu history without mentioning the Batutsi, and it's impossible to speak on Batutsi history without mentioning the Bahutu. The term Batutsi itself has been generalized to mean cattle herder starting around the 19th century. Based on a more recent look at Batutsi history as mentioned before, the Batutsi seem to have descended from a Nilotic population that migrated to the region of Rwanda. This original Nilotic population were cattle herders who traveled and picked up some cultural elements from Africans in the surrounding area wherever they decided to settle. In Rwanda, this original Nilotic population, nearly in totality, culturally, genetically, and linguistically, intermarried and intermixed with the local Twa and Bahutu people. This population became completely absorbed into the local pool, but because the cultural value in cattle herding remained, this no longer Nilotic group became known as the Batutsi, a strictly local Bantu people obviously closely related to the Bahutu. And because the Batutsi were not different from the Bahutu culturally, genetically, or linguistically, the title of Batutsi, in a sense, became more of a socio-political title, indicating power, and Bahutu became one that denoted an individual without power, or perhaps even seeking power. Now, what further drives this point home? Well, the kingdom that the Batutsi formed in Rwanda and Burundi gives weight to this idea. The Batutsi were the ruling class in Rwanda and Burundi before the arrival of any European colonizing force. In the Rwanda kingdom, the kings considered divine were the Batutsi, army commanders were all Batutsi, and the Bahutus did hold some positions of power even as advisors, but elevated positions within the kingdom held the social title of a Batutsi, even if they were originally Bahutu. The one institution in the Rwanda kingdom that prevented the Batutsi-Bahutu distinction from hardening into a caste-like difference, just as it prevented the formation of a counter-elite that would in time challenge Batutsi domination, was the rare event of a Bahutu who was able to accumulate cattle and rise the social hierarchy and achieve the political status of a Batutsi, hence becoming a Batutsi in social and symbolic form. This social and political institution within the Rwandan kingdom was called Kwehutra, which literally translates into shed Bahutuness. So as we can see, in a sense, the ruling elite developed Bahutu and Batutsi as social and political titles that could be interchangeable despite any so-called foreign or, more correctly, Nilotic features. At the head of the Batutsi complex hierarchical political structure was the Mwami, or king, who as mentioned before was considered to be of divine origin. The Kingdom of Rwanda was ruled by a Batutsi elite 
leading to a system that apparently advanced peaceful terms of lower class individuals. Unfortunately, that fragile system was corrupted once in the hands of colonial authority. The colonial authorities, using the hermetic theory, validated and built on a pre-existing system and even required the Bahutu and the Batutsi to wear identification cards so that they can be distinguished. One key factor of colonial rule that shifted the socio-political system of the local elite into a racial one was ridding the Quihatura. This event solidified the social statuses of the Bahutu and the Batutsi as designated Bahutus could no longer rise the social political ladder anymore. In the previous Rwandan kingdom dominated by the Batutsi, Bahutus had some semblance of power as power was distributed among some of the chiefs, but colonial rule abolished all of that. A quote from René Lamarchand's study of colonial Rwanda sums it up nicely. The old balance of forces between cattle chiefs, land chiefs, and army chiefs, which in previous times had served to protect the Bahutu peasantry against undue exactions, was abolished. Now, all chiefs were to be represented by card-holding Batutsis, even if it meant replacing the Bahutu. This event, of course, aggravated the situation, leading to the infamous genocide we're all unfortunately familiar with today. In Rwanda today, the Batutsi and Bahutu live side by side, and these two groups of people have been committed to overcoming the stereotypes concerning ethnic differences. The differences between the two communities are acknowledged and even highlighted on a smaller scale, but on the national level, the commitment to unity persists. The Rwandan embassy in Washington, D.C. emphasizes this with the following quote. Inhabitants of Rwanda are called Banyarwanda. They speak the same language, have the same culture, live on the same hills, and for centuries have intermarried. The three ethnic groups are the Bahutu, the Batutsi, and the Batwa, referred to in the West as Hutus, Tutsis, and Twas. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and would like to support in its continued production, go to the link in the description box or simply click the Patreon icon on your screen. Know that's all. Remember your ancestors. Peace.